Hey everybody, how's it going? When I discuss repair, right to repair, and Apple, I have given people the wrong idea that right to repair has something to do with Apple specifically, and that it isn't a cultural issue that is endemic to virtually every manufacturer nowadays. We used to live in a country where when you purchase devices, they would have schematics or diagrams on the inside of the appliance. When you would purchase a computer in the 70s, it would come with books that had block diagrams on how things were put together. And that when you would purchase medical equipment, that the manufacturer would be okay with you or your hospital choosing who it is that works on that medical equipment. And one of the things that I remember mentioning in Maine is that this is not an issue that is particular to one manufacturer or even one industry. This is why repairs are becoming more expensive all around. I mentioned this is why healthcare is becoming very expensive. This is an issue in the medical industry because in the medical industry there are hospitals where there's one hundred to two hundred thousand dollar machines. They need a two hundred dollar power supply. They wind up just forcing the hospital to replace it and pay a hundred thousand dollars, which by the way is why our hospital bill has been going up over the past twenty to thirty years. And I stand by that. Now, if you look at what's been going on recently, this is an issue that is affecting the medical industry because of the shortage of ventilators. There's this one website that someone sent me. It's a pretty nice website, Frank's Hospital Workshop, and he actually tries to make available these service manuals to ventilators, anesthesia machines, airway humidifiers, nebulizers, and all sorts of stuff here. And you can see the service manuals and all, all sorts of good stuff here. And then you get to this point where it says download prohibited by Draeger, support is not required, and there's other companies here where it's also the same thing. So what he's doing is he's putting these up, and if he gets a cease and desist notice, once he gets the cease and desist, he'll take the manual down, and he'll put that little notice so that you know that that company doesn't want you having access to it. He's aggregating these service manuals. If you have them, he's more than happy to uh, post them on the site. And the reason he's doing this is because there is a shortage of this type of equipment. So if any of it doesn't work, we would like to get that equipment fixed so that it can be returned to the stockpile that can be used for people who are dying, and they are advocating against this happening. Now, how do I know that they're advocating against this happening? Well, just read what it is they say. This is from Advamed regarding right to repair, uh, concerns with state right to repair legislation. Our primary concerns is that they could result in maintenance and repairs of medical devices being performed by untrained personnel and that inappropriate replacement parts may be used. Already there have been reports of serious adverse events linked to failures to appropriately repair medical equipment or use of replacements from parts not recommended by the original manufacturer. You might note that there's no citation there on this this lobbying letter, and that this sounds very similar to what it is that we hear in our industry, where they will say if the ind you know if independent service it, they'll break the phone or the computer, or dangers, 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 batteries could explode. And it's the exact same thing coming from companies like G General uh, GE Healthcare over here. It says... The, over here, this is a very interesting argument that, that I found at, towards the end of their document. It says, These proprietary resources are not required for the successful service and maintenance of medical equipment by GE Healthcare. It's very similar to when you'll hear a lobbyist say, Well, Lewis is already able to do his job now without right to repair, so why do we need it? Yeah, when, because Lewis is pirating schematics and tools, because Lewis is buying chips from vendors that are probably not supposed to be selling him those tools. Speakeasies existed during Prohibition, and people could buy alcohol just fine. There's no problem with Prohibition. Yeah, there's no problem that the bar that you're discussing existing is breaking the law and could be shut down at any given time. There's no problem with it. Because this is speakeasy. Prohibition's no big deal. You know, it, it's ridiculous. And the one that I find funny here, likewise, as a multi-vendor service provider, GE Healthcare does not expect to require access to proprietary technologies and protocols from other manufacturers when we service their equipment. Imagine if a bank executive said, when I sign up for a credit card, I'm okay with a 70% APR, so why can't we charge a 70% APR? What does that have to do with it? Just because you don't ask for this stuff doesn't mean that other people don't need it to be able to do these repairs. Maybe you don't actually repair these th devices for other companies, which is why you don't ask for it. And if you take a look at what the FDA says here, FDA report on the quality, safety, and effectiveness of servicing medical devices, May 2018. And I will link to this stuff in the description down below if I don't forget. 
tell me if I'm if I'm interpreting this wrong. It says a majority of comments, complaints, and adverse effect reports alleging that inadequate servicing caused or contributed to clinical adverse effects and deaths actually pertain to remanufacturing and not servicing. And the continued availability of third-party entities to service and repair medical devices is critical to the functioning of the U.S. healthcare system. Let me repeat that. This is not from a right to repair advocacy organization. This is not from a lobbying organization. This is not from my YouTube channel. This is from the FDA. The continued availability of third-party entities to service and repair medical devices is critical to the functioning of the U.S. healthcare system. If you wonder why it is that prices have absolutely skyrocketed and gone through the roof with the healthcare system, a lot of it is companies price gouging on basic materials and supplies, but also the inability for third parties to repair that which is broken. And when you hear them say there are many instances of adverse effects that, you know, all this, these terrible things are going to happen, people are going to die if third parties fix these devices simply point them to this document from the FDA themselves, saying that many of these reports alleging inadequate servicing caused or contributed to clinical adverse effects actually pertain to remanufacturing and not servicing. And this, the FDA themselves are saying, stop making this shit up when it comes to third-party repair, in my opinion. This is how I interpret what it is that I am reading here. This seems in direct opposition to what AdvaMed and GE are trying to say. One point I want to make clear here is that the presence of a schematic or service manual on this website does not mean that the manufacturer is okay with it. That any of these schematics or diagrams or service manuals could be taken down at any given time if the manufacturer learns that they're available. This is very similar to websites in our industry that will find as many schematics that people can give them as possible and then they'll list them on their website and then next week it'll be taken down. And then this whole whack-a-mole process repeats itself where another website will become an aggregate website of all these schematics and diagrams and then two weeks from then the manufacturer will send a cease and desist and they'll go down. And while they're in court, another website will come up. The same garbage that we go through is not something that is unique to laptop and cell phone repair. Because it is so ingrained in our culture, this is something that just goes all the way up the chain, even to life-saving, life-critical devices. Check back on this website in the next couple of weeks. I guarantee you, you will see that there are more of these schematics and manuals that are removed. And as I keep bringing up in these videos, and I will bring up again and again, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of someone who is very, very sick right now. Someone who is gasping for breath, who is this close to suffocating. What would you rather have at the other end of the room? A ventilator that was fixed by an independent service center with good reviews that is bonded, insured, and licensed? Or a post-it note that says, the manufacturer didn't get around to fixing these ventilators yet. Come back tomorrow. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.